Vibrant Church, what up? Hey, it's Marco here, and uh, somehow, some way, the devil hopped up in our thumb drive that we use to record our Sunday services, and uh, for some reason, our Sunday service didn't record. So guess what? We're going to hang out in my office here. I'm going to enjoy a cup of coffee. I encourage you to enjoy a cup of coffee with me. And uh, we're going to redo the message from this past Sunday so that you can be equipped on how to be Mr. and Mrs. Better Half. So here we go. So welcome to our Mr. and Mrs. Better Half series, How to Win a Woman, How to Keep a Man. Over the next five weeks, we're going to look at five commitments that, if applied, will fail-proof your marriage. And uh, there's a fantastic resource out there called 25 Ways to a Happier Marriage by Dr. Les and Leslie Parrott. Um, Jeannie and I have had the opportunity to spend some time with this couple. Uh, They're incredible. They're the real deal. And it's a great resource to uh, find happiness in your marriage. Create, actually, create a happy marriage. Um, Let me start off by asking our vibrant ladies this question. How many of you, whenever you were growing up, man, you dreamed of being a princess? I mean, you had the princess shoes, you had the princess dress, and you would go in your room and you would put on your princess clothes with your princess clown makeup. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. That makeup that looks like, whoa, you got makeup on your face. Um, How many of you would do that and you'd spin around in your room and And you would dream of the day that Prince Charming would come to your rescue. And not only come to your rescue, but one day you'd get married, you'd have kids, and you had all your kids named. And not only were your kids named, but you had your future husband (laughs) named. Um, I bet you there's some ladies out there that could relate to that. Um, But the reality is, is there's a, a lot of expectation that can happen, we can have a lot of expectations about what marriage is going to be like one day. Um, And then there's many times when our marriage doesn't meet our expectations. And there can be all types of letdowns, disappointments, hurt, anger, pain, and uh, even frustration. In fact, there's probably people sitting out there right now that uh, have been so wounded in relationships, whether past relationships or even current relationships. Or, Or you may be in a relationship right now that Um, If you're honest, it's in such bad shape that you're asking this question, is a good marriage even possible? Uh, The short answer to that question is yes. A good marriage is possible. But let me also say this, it's not likely if you do what everyone else in our society does. See, a great marriage is possible, but it's not likely if we do what everyone else in our society does. See, See, statistics say this, 50% of marriages fail. We've all heard that before. In the church, out of the church, 50% of marriages fail. And there's another stat that says the younger you're married, the less likely you are to make it. Whoa, that's crazy. And there's another statistic that says this, the vast majority of those that are married and do make it are miserable. There's not much intimacy. And there's this idea in these marriages that are miserable that, man, we just have to stay together for the kids. So the odds are really stacked against us if we do what everyone else does. Let me ask you this question. What other significant area in your life are you satisfied with 50% of the odds stacked against you? I mean, for example, if there's a 50% chance that your favorite cereal is going to give you cancer, guess what? You're going to say goodbye to the Lucky Charms and you're going to go down to the organic store and you're going to try to find you a cereal that's probably a little bit more healthy. What about this one? What if there's a 50% chance that next week all your investments and all your money in your bank is gonna be gone? Would you keep your money in those investments and in that bank? The answer is no. Chances are, immediately, you're gonna try to move your money to a safe place. What if I told you that when you went to school, for all my school folk out there, college folk out there, or people getting a higher education out there, If you went to school the next day and there's a 50% chance that when you walked onto campus, you would get pantsed in front of everybody. How many of y'all would go to school the next day? 
I mean, you'd be like saying, Mama, <clears throat> I think I'm getting a little sick. Uh, I think I'm getting a little cold. Uh, Mama, last night when I was sleeping, I got my pinky toe hung up on my covers and it broke and uh, I can't go to school today. I mean, you would be coming up with all kinds of ways to play hooky. See, the reality is, is that when we would say no, we would say no to all these situations because we're not satisfied with 50% odds against us in our life. So over the next five weeks, if you're not married or you are married, we want to help prepare you and equip you on how to have better odds in your marriage, how to be Mr. and Mrs. Better Half so that you can fail proof your marriage. The cool thing is, is, is we even have a hashtag for you. Um, if you'd like to get on social media and you like to... Um, rep whatever God's doing in your life on social media, you can use the hashtag VC fail proof marriage. Hashtag VC fail proof marriage. Vibrant Church fail proof marriage. Um, if you're married in here, we want your spouse to look at you and go, I'm so glad I married you. You're not perfect. Lord knows you're not perfect, but you're the perfect person for me. You are my better half. If you are married in here, or you're not married in here, we want you to walk away saying, man, the commitments that they talked about in the Mr. and Mrs. Better Half series, I need to apply those in my life right now so that when I say I do in the future, I can have a fail-proof marriage. Again, the odds are stacked against us if we do what everyone else in our society does, but there's hope. And that's what we want you to know at Vibrant Church. We are a place where, man, our, our heart's desire is for you to experience hope for tomorrow and healing from yesterday. Man, we all need hope. We all need healing in our lives. And over these next five weeks, we're gonna identify five commitments that will offer you hope that if applied, they will fail-proof your marriage. So what's the first commitment we've got to apply to become Mr. and Mrs. Better Half? What's the first commitment? The first commitment is this. We have to seek God. You have to seek God individually and together as a married unit on a regular basis. See, this is week one, seeking God. Week two, we're going to talk about how to fight fair. Week three is going to be how to have fun in your marriage. Week four is going to be staying pure. And then week five, we're going to make this declaration that we will never give up. So let's unpack this first commitment to seek God. And I want to start off by saying this. Hey, Houston. We have a problem. We have a problem. And our problem is this. Before we're married, many of us aren't seeking God. Instead, we're seeking a spouse. Yo, time out, Marco. I'm, I'm not quite understanding. I mean, isn't that what I'm supposed to do? I mean, God made male and female. And when he made female, he made female looking no bum, yo. Like, I mean, come on, bro. What's up? Hold on. Hear me out. Here's the problem. We're seeking the perfect someone. Anything wrong with that? No. But that person that we're seeking, and we're seeking them to meet all of our needs. Because everyone knows that we can't really be happy until we find the one. The one. The one. How many of you know about the one out there? Maybe you've had somebody come up to you and say, hey, are you, do you think they're the one? I can remember um, when I was a youth pastor, man, for, for years, uh, for seven years, I stacked 1,100 chairs every week in the auditorium and then restacked them to get ready for our youth ministry and stuff. And I had these crew of teenagers with us and sometimes my friends would come and help me. And um, I can remember I had a friend, Brian, and, and uh, one day he uh, comes up to me and uh, as we're stacking chairs and we're talking and and I said, hey, Brian, I said, dude, I like Jenny. At the time, it was Jenny Derbaloy. And he was like, dude, you like Jenny? I was like, yeah, bro, I like Jenny, man. And he goes, do you think that she's the one? And I was like, bro, I think she's the one. And uh, obviously, history shows us that she was the one, and she was the one that God had for me. But we're going to talk about this here. We're going to talk about the one. Um, here's some other ways that it, it looks. So the guy meets a girl. She's pretty. She smells good. She gives him attention. Their eyes lock in public, and he's going, yo, 
I think I found the one. How about this scenario? This girl. So I met this guy and oh my goodness, he is so sweet. He talks and talks and talks. Our conversations go on for hours. It's amazing. You're not going to believe this, but we fell asleep talking on the phone together the other night. I mean, can you believe this? I think I found the one. See, society and culture tells us that to be satisfied in life, we must find the one. Nobody's walking around going, hey, I met someone. They're so awesome. I think I found the two. Yeah, nobody's doing that. No, it's, have you found the one? And at some level, culture is right. But again, there's the pro- There's a problem. And here's the problem. The one that will meet our every need is not a person. It's God. In order to have a Mr. and Mrs. Better Half fail-proof marriage, check this out. God has to be your one, and your spouse has to be your two. This is vital. It's a vital foundation and commitment needed for any relationship to last. God has to be your one, and your spouse has to be your two. See, God designed it this way. He designed marriage to function like this from the beginning. Check this out. Matthew 22, 36 through 38. Teacher, this this guy approaches Jesus and says, Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Listen to this. This is the first and greatest commandment, Jesus says. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. So what's the first greatest, what's the first commandment? Man, we've got to find the one. We've got to love the one with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. See, God is your one and your spouse is your two. And it has to be in that order. Well, Marco, God is my number one, man. But my kids, if I'm honest, are my number two. Time out. No, that, that's not right. God is number one. Spouse is number two. And your kids are your number three. God has put those kids in your family to watch mom and dad live out a fail-proof marriage. See, the best thing a parent can do and the best way a parent can equip a child is to show them how to treat their spouse. That's why couples that, man, they live together before they get married, man, those, those relationships even have a higher rate of failure, a higher probability of of failure, because that's not the way that God designed it. God designed it where, man, once you get married, that's when you become one. That's when you come under the same household as one. And then you model for your kids in that household what a good marriage looks like, what a fail-proof marriage looks like. See, I want to talk to two groups of people for a moment. The first group is those that are not married, but one day you'd like to be married. Here's what my prayer for you is. My prayer, that, my prayer that your commitment would be this. I will seek the one while preparing for the two. If you're not married out there, this is the best thing that you can do. I will seek the one while preparing for the two. Matthew 6, it says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. See, we want to love God. We want to seek God. We want to please God. We want to know God when we're not married. Marco, I want an incredible spouse one day. Then be an incredible follower of Jesus. Seek God first, and He will bring the right person at the right time in your life. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to make it happen. God will bring that right person at the right time. See, the closer you get to God, Actually, the closer you get to each other. That's just how it works. See, a lot of times in our culture today, there's a, a lot of people, I say some people that call themselves Christians, but they put the God thing off until later when they think life matters more. So you're single and you think one day I'll be married. And when I'm married, that's when I'll get really serious about my walk with God. But for now, man, I'm going to hit up the clubs. I'm going to date whoever comes my way. I'm going to jump around from this person to that person. 
And you live kind of an ungodly life now thinking this, that one day later, I'll get serious with God. And as somebody who's been down that road before, as your pastor, I'll say this, that way of thinking is incredibly dangerous, incredibly painful, and can create some serious problems in your future marriage. See, there's a true story of this girl that loved God growing up. She goes off to college, and in college, she gave in to peer pressure and started partying. <coughs> Excuse me. Partying turned into alcohol. Alcohol turned into drugs, and drugs turned into guy after guy after guy. It got to a point where she found herself in a lifestyle of very destructive sin. In the back of her mind, she would tell herself, but I, I still believe in God, and there's something in me that I know I still love God, and I want to live for God. I still want a godly marriage. One day I'm going to turn it all around and do the right thing. Yet she continued to live that lifestyle. As time went on, she ended up meeting a guy that was everything she hoped to marry. He was godly. He was handsome. He was a leader. He had a great career going. And he was teaching other men how to follow Jesus. And she goes home and she tells her mom, Mom, I met this guy. He's everything I've ever wanted. He's the kind of guy I want to marry. And mom, I got to be honest with you. I'm going to put the hint out there that I'm interested in him. And the mom looks at her daughter and very lovingly, but very straightforward says, sweetheart, a guy like that is not looking for a girl like you. How many of you know that's a punch in the gut? That hurt, that stung. See, my response to the story is, If you want a godly life one day, live a godly life today. My bad, let me repeat that. If you want a godly marriage one day, live a godly life today. If you want a godly marriage one day, live a godly life today. Become the type of person that you would like to marry. See, it's a little unfair to expect your future spouse to be a better half when we were intentionally a bad half. Again, If you want 50-50 odds, then live like everyone else. But if you want something different, Marco, I want something different. Marco, I want a godly marriage one day. Then seek God today. Again, I will seek the one while preparing for the two. Now let me talk to the married folks for a second. Here's our commitment. I will always seek the one with my two. I will always seek the one with my two. Why is this important? Because our marriage will never be what it was meant to be until God is our number one and our spouse is our number two. See, when we try to make our spouse or our fiance, our girlfriend, our boyfriend, our number one, guess what happens? We put them above God and we idolize them. Anytime you put something above God in your life, that becomes an idol in your life. And many times we do this in relationships. Man, we'll put that spouse, that fiance, that boyfriend, that girlfriend above God where I'm going to focus on them and I'm, you know, kind of the God thing. Yeah, I'm going to pursue that thing, but it's kind of a little secondary thought like in my relationship of I'm going to kind of do what I want to and yeah, if it fits, then I'll apply the God thing to this relationship. But I'm telling you, that's a dangerous way of thinking. This is what I want you to know. Whatever you idolize, you will eventually demonize. What? Whatever you idolize, you will eventually demonize. Let me explain. Here's idolize. In the beginning, boy meets girl. She is absolutely amazing. She met Marco. She's so organized. I mean, all of her clothes are color coordinated in her closet. I mean, how cool is that? I just love how she's so passionate about life. That's idolize. Here's demonize. Now that they're married for a little while, it's like, dude, she is a control freak. She wants everything her way. If I move one shirt in her closet, dude, she comes unglued. She's driving me crazy. All she does is nag, 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 nag. Again, idolize, demonize. How about this one? Idolize. Girl meets boy. He is so laid back. I mean... He's just chill. I mean, you can hashtag that next to his profile picture, yo. He's chill. He's easygoing. He's so calm and stable. And Lord knows I need some stability in my life. That's idolized. Here's demonized. After they've been married for a little while. Man, 
He is a bump on a log. The dude has no ambition. I'm shocked his thumbs even work. I mean, all he does is like change the channel and play with his remote control on video games. I mean, I'm surprised he doesn't have arthritis in his thumbs by now. Again, idolize, demonize. Whatever you idolize, you will eventually demonize. So what do we do? This is what we do. We've got to put things in their right spot. We must seek God, our number one, with our spouse, our number two. Marco, that sounds good and all, but how do I seek God with my spouse? Here's some great ways. How about worship together in church? Man, make this a weekly commitment. Every week, we are going to worship together in church together as a unit, as a family. Here's another one. Serve together on a serve team. That's a great way. Those who serve together, stay together. I'm just telling you, man, those who serve together, stay together. Here's another one. Have regular conversations about what God is doing in the life of your spouse. When's the last time that you've looked at your spouse in the eyes over coffee or over dinner and said, hey, what's God speaking to you? What's God showing you? What's God laying on your heart? Have those conversations. But I'll say this. If you don't do any of these together, at least do this. Do the 10-10 principle together at least once a week. Marco, what's the 10-10 principle? It's something that I've personally been doing for about 15 years, and it's absolutely life-changing. It's 10 minutes of worshiping and talking with God, and it's 10 minutes absorbing your Bible, either reading it or listening to it. And the cool thing is this, as at Vibrant Church, our vision is this, is to help you grow a vibrant relationship with God. That's what we're all about, helping you grow a vibrant relationship with God. You can go to wearevibrantchurch.com slash Walk with God. And man, we have an explanation of the 1010 principle there. Uh, we have song lists. You can actually click on a link and it'll take you to Spotify, man. And you can have worship music going on and jam out to some worship music. And we also have Bible reading plans that you can download on that page and it really absorb the Bible, read and listen to the Bible. And I want to encourage you in this. I want to encourage you to fill your home with worship music. You'd be shocked at how it calms things down. Marco, my house is crazy. Well, what are you allowing into your home? I'll say this. If you put some worship music on, man, in the presence of it, it draws the presence of God into your home. See, life is better when a husband and a wife are walking with God together. How many of you know, we're going to get real. Again, we're real at Vibrant Church. You got to be real. How many of you know it's hard to argue with your spouse when you're walking with God together? It's harder to commit adultery on your spouse or get hooked on porn when you're walking with God together. It's also harder to get a divorce when you're walking with God together. Worship, pray, and absorb your Bibles together regularly. God is your number one. Your spouse is your number two. See, Family Life did a survey and they surveyed thousands of Christians And and the surveys came back with these stats. Fewer than 8% of Christian couples pray together regularly. Wow, that means 92% of Christian couples, they don't pray together. But here's the good news. Out of those 8% of couples that do pray together, check this out. Fewer than 1% divorce. Whoa. That's 99 to 1 odds that they're not going to get divorced. So here's the final thought for today. What odds do you want? Do you want 50-50 odds that your marriage is going to end if you do what everyone else in our society does? Or do you want 99 to 1 odds that your marriage is going to succeed if you seek God together? I don't know about you, but I want those 99 to 1 odds. So this is what I'm going to challenge you to do. If you're not married in here, I'm going to challenge you to begin seeking God by committing to the 1010 principle on a regular basis. Spend 10 minutes worshiping God and 10 minutes absorbing your Bible. And during that time, I encourage you, pray for your spouse. Pray for your future spouse. I I used to do that. God, wherever she is, I pray that she would be loving you and seeking you with all of her heart. That when you do cross our paths, God, that we would be able to, to be in agreement of our relationship with God. That's foundational. Do you believe the same things about walking with God? If you're married in here, 
and you're new to the concept of praying with your spouse. How many of you know it can be awkward at times, especially when you first start and you start praying with your spouse, you're like, oh, uh, I can pray with everybody and anybody else, but praying with my spouse is a little bit different. But this is what I'm gonna challenge you to do. Grab the hand of your number two and seek God, your number one together, at least one time each week through this series, five weeks. Put in your phone, your calendar, and put, put today, put this, today I'm going to pray with my, my spouse. If you're already married in here and you already pray with your spouse, then I'm gonna challenge you to do this. Grab their hand and seek God together every day for the next five weeks. And if you'll do this, I believe that God will fail-proof your marriage as you become Mr. and Mrs. Better Half. I hope you enjoyed today's message. Again, the devil tried to stop us by getting up in our thumb drive, but let me tell you this, the devil tried to hold us back, but he can't. Anyways, I love you guys. I hope you have a great day. Let me pray with you, and we'll close this message. God, we love you. We praise you. I thank you for every person listening to this today. God, I pray if they're not married, that they will seek you. And God, that through a God moment, you will bring their perfect spouse to them. God, as they, they, as they seek you, they're number one. God, you will bring that perfect number two. And for those that are married in here, God, I pray your protection over the marriages of Vibrant Church. I pray your protection over the marriages of our country and the United States throughout the world, God. Protect that unit as they glorify you, Lord. We love you. We praise you. And we thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name. Amen.